And with that, it's now time to move ahead with the next panel discussion, which is on chat GPT versus human intelligence. How will this impact the communication and media industry? And please join me in welcoming a panelist for the same, Ms. Indu Sharma, Senior GM Communications, Snyder Electric, Ms. Shobha Vasudevan, Head, Enterprise Communications and PR, Dell Technologies, Ms. Sunita Patnayak, Director, Corporate Affairs, Mars, Mr. Munawar Adari, Managing Director, Fleshman, Hilad, and this session will be moderated by Ms. Karima Sharma, Assistant Professor, Guest, Dell University. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this opportunity to begin with. I'd like to thank Exchange for Media for uh, putting this together and uh, welcome you all to the third edition of PR and Corporate Communications Award for 30 Under 30. Um, our panel is today going to discuss about the topic of chat GPT versus human intelligence. This is a topic which has very much been in the mainstream of late. And as people who are all in, um, you know, call taking authority sort of a space where you are custodians of <laughs> brands, it's a topic that's gaining even more importance over a period of time. Now, before we jump into a discussion, a quick round of introduction of all the esteemed panelists. Um, Ms. Sindhu Sharma, who's yet to join us, is a senior uh, GM of communications with Shanaita Electric. Then we have Ms. Shobha Vasudevan with us, who heads enterprise and communications and PR for Dell Technologies. We also have Ms. Sunita Patnayak with us, who's the director of corporate affairs and is associated with Mars Rickley. We have Mr. Munawar Atari, who is the managing director of Fleishman Hillard. Now, all of them are extremely credible names in their own field and space. They have close to one and a half to two decades of experience behind them. They're highly recognized for the kind of value that they bring to the table. Very well awarded through a lot of industry forums. And uh, from curating great campaigns to executing them to stakeholder management, to evaluating influencer impact to much more. All of them have a lot of laurels up their alley. So without further ado, I would like to start this panel by talking about the first aspect, and I'll go from uh, to each of the uh, members to talk about the topic per se. What is your opening uh, a minute or two of thoughts on chat GPT versus human intelligence? What mm -hmm. is the kind of impact that the communication industry is already seeing? And what is it that you think it's going to evolve into? So if you could share a little about differences and similarities of AI versus human intelligence to begin with. And, you, you know, maybe then we can take the discussion on from there. Uh, Munawar, we can start with you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on the panel. Uh, to my mind, I think this was the most fascinating and uh, most hottest, hottest uh, topic uh, of today. And uh, the, the entire idea of uh, artificial versus human intelligence, I think it's it's uh, the debate is settled as far as in my mind is concerned that artificial intelligence has and if, if it has not has yet will very soon overtake human intelligence uh, and not only overtake human intelligence by a bit it will it will make us look quite foolish and useless uh, if you if if you uh, and i'm not just trying to make this point just to just to uh, for drive trying to make a radical point but i truly believe that that's what the scenario is if, and and uh, if you if you hear the experts in the field, for example, if you hear the founders of uh, uh, you know uh, DeepMind, uh, if you hear the founders of OpenAI, if you hear people uh, who have been the pioneers in this field, uh, this is what they uh, say, and they have they have the credibility, and they have not been saying this now. They have been saying this for at least a decade. Uh, in fact, a uh, few weeks ago, you had some of the biggest minds who got together and said that, do we really need to stop? Uh, for some time, the rapid development that is happening in this space and rethink and step back. Uh, if you just hear some of the congressional debates where, you know, the founders of OpenAI have explained themselves. So they are very, they are very candid about this and uh, the way things are moving. Uh, you can imagine that something like a chat GPT, which is just a moment in the artificial intelligence uh, journey. Uh, they are very clear that, uh, you know, the time as far as human and artificial intelligence is concerned, just to uh, you know, close this is is quite settled. That if not now, in the near future, I mean, ChatGPT you can imagine is something like what iPhone was in two thousand seven. 
uh, and the progress is very non-linear. The progress is in a manner that it is growing by leaps and bounds. You, you, we are not expecting incremental changes. We are expecting non-linear changes. The chat GPT-4 is not going to be incrementally better from uh, 3, but it's going to be it's going to be 3, 4, 5, 10x better than uh, you know the previous version. Therefore, uh, if anybody has used any of the tools, and chat GPT is just one of the most famous tools and kind of become the poster child of uh, the artificial intelligence uh, conversation. If you use any of the technology, you will realize that it is it is far more uh, serious than we could ever imagine. So I think that's what I would kind of argue for. That's a very interesting and a robust point to open the panel with. Extremely interesting. Let's hear from Ms. Sunita what her thoughts are. And, you know, if she agrees with it, she wants to build on it, or if she has a polarizingly different view. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, happy to be here. Um, so my view is that, um, see, AI will definitely enhance your research skills. It will collect the dots for you. But ultimately, it's human beings, human intelligence, which will, which will actually connect the dots. And, um, you know, and ultimately, having said that, we have to collaborate at some point, and we are going to collaborate. We are moving in synergy. It's always going to be, it's not going to be this versus that or who's better than who, but what is necessary is in order to collaborate and really appreciate the power of technology, I think we have to change ourselves. We have to move towards changing the mindset and changing the culture because all of us are suddenly getting very rattled, even in our corporates, you know, why data should be the pivot point of all decision making. That's great. You can use a lot of data insights, et cetera, but everybody has to embrace it. So for me, it is, you know, it exists. We have to exist together. And, um, you know, there is also a threat of jobs will go, et cetera. Yes, like any technology innovation, you know, some jobs will, some cognitive jobs will become irrelevant. Uh, but ultimately, I think it is going to be common sense, which is going to be common sense of human beings, which is going to put it all together. It's, you may do great research, but if you're not able to arrive at the desired result using your own common sense, intuition, foresight, then you will not, you, the, the AI tool is not going to do that for you. And, and just to conclude on this, I remember, you know, IBM's global CEO, former CEO, she had said when this whole AI revolution was happening, uh, she had said that 10% of jobs will change, but 100% will change, 100, sorry, 10% of jobs will go, but 100% will change. And that change starts with us. Thank you so much for that point, Sunita. So, so far we've heard from two panelists and these are two almost, uh, you know, uh, polarizing views. One says that there is an incremental, not just incremental, but exponential change. And we need to get ready to work around it. While the point of collaboration is reiterated by Ms. Sunita, but she's talking about the fact that, you know, that there is no replacing the emotional intelligence that a human being possesses. Over to you, uh, Ms. Vasudevan, if you can, you know, add to this, what's your opening point on AI versus uh, AI's impact on media industry, communications industry per se, and where do you see it having a place in this entire conversation? Thanks, Karima, and uh, happy to be here. Um, so I, I heard uh, both Manavar's uh, views and the other point of view. So I would probably stay somewhere in the middle because I think uh, like all technology, it is it is an enabler. Uh, technology at the end of the day, we have to remember was created because some Body decided to code for it. So this is a gen this is something that we have created to help us. Uh, you know, so I think most like all kind of technologies, specifically it's designed for certain kind of tasks. Uh, it can answer your questions, it can generate your text, it can uh, you know, it can base itself on experience-based learning. Um, now, where it differs from human beings and very uh, similar to what Sunita was also mentioning was that it lacks the emotional ability to connect the dots. Uh, at human intelligence level, we are still able to do the critical thinking, we're still able to make the logical inferences. 
chat gpt's ability or any ai tool for that uh, matter ability is limited to what it has been given in its training right. data so if it hasn't gone through those uh, sequences it may not be able to give you the kind of uh, data that you're like likely to wanting to pull out of it whereas for human beings it's very easy to do uh, innovations on the spot we're able to do uh, you know inferences based on what is presented to us at that point of time which is very different than what the tool can do uh, in terms of what communication industry can gain from it in the future the opportunities i agree with manavar is immense it will definitely go uh, and you know in being able to enhance the kind of jobs that we are doing it probably will free humans from doing a uh, regular task which need a lot of uh, uh, bandwidth and spare them to do more uh, strategic thinking more uh, innovative thinking and you know a sort of assign tasks to ai tools which are more to do with monitoring with measurement uh, things which don't require uh, let's say a, a emotional aspect to it the benefit of a tool i like this is also in the fact that uh, it helps in creating very neutral unbiased decisions because of fact of the you know matter is that the technology is not able to sort of prefer one over the other whereas we as human beings do have a point of view sometimes we're judgmental sometimes we're very uh, you know opinionated about uh, about certain things so it just uh, you know if you have to take unbiased and very neutral and very fair decisions i would think tools are the best way to do it ai tools certainly help us getting uh, to the uh, you know a very data driven decisions very data driven metrics uh, but for anything that requires you to have an emotional connect with your consumers your readers uh, the way that they are perceiving your brand the way that the emotional strength of your brand is being put across human intelligence can never be replaced thank you so much for that uh, view uh, shobha i think something really interesting came out of that that you know building on what munawar and sunita have already talked about that yes it's data that chat gpt can really interpret but human intelligence is something that it can't uh, replace and hence for the media and communications industry some some of our regular mundane rhetorical neutral tasks can be delegated and some of innovative thinking and ideation and curation and creation can now be uh, uh, held by humans more closely so i'll uh, bring uh, miss indu now at this point in this discussion and you know get her opening thoughts on while we've already got some material to get going and you know the conversation is already seeming very interactive what is your point of view on all everything that you've heard so far thank you so much karima and thank you we for them for inviting us over for this i had everyone and i don't think there is anything to be uh, discontented with what anyone of you have actually said the the interactions of humans with the ai is already happening so the debate should not be whether it will be taking over or whatever and all it is an enabler and it is very much going to be that every profession is going to have an interaction with these tools however since the facade of it was initially content and gpt gpt sorry chat gpt which got introduced hence the communication conversations just geared up a lot more than what many other professions faced but the reality of the matter is that there is so much more that the communications team do and content is just mm. one of the smallest pieces and ai actually has the capability of streamlining most of the kind of work that we do so i would say something similar to what shobha uh, you know spoke about that we as communicators should be excited about the possibilities that ai brings to the table mm. you know freeing our workforce uh to do a lot of automated tasks because whatever you do i mean it it can be automated in some capacity if if that is happening your workforce is free for a lot more strategic interventions there is always going to be a human to human aspect of communication which is going to define the brands because at the end a brand has to talk to a human so that one layer of you know strategic intervention will always require a human intervention that is not going anywhere you know so so that strategy is going to remain but it is going to mean that the skills will see a massive change while it was earlier just about writing anybody who could write well today you can have your drafts ready from many of these tools right but you look at those finer nuances the brands who are looking at regional communication you know you can't really read 50 language but chat gpt can do it for you you cannot really sit and analyze 100 newspapers 
but podcast you know and social websites all of that can be done so it's a huge enabler and i don't see a reason why one should be fretted it should be currently we should be making strategies for the next 5 years how do we evolve to manage this evolution that should actually be the strategy of communicators at this point in time thank you so much indu i think that's a very valid and a valuable point that you've uh, brought to the notice of everybody here in the panel also more so because we are today discussing this at the event of 30 under 30 we are celebrating 30 individuals who are under the age of 30 who are young ones who are going to you know in the next decade or so be the torch bearers of communications and media uh, you know as as a sector and um, going to manavar next uh, you know a full circle on everything that we've discussed here um clearly the ladies are uh, very much rooting for the you know the human intelligence the innovative creative side of it and you brought in a beautiful masculine point of data and hard facts um taking this discussion into the emotional intelligence space where storytelling lies at the core content lies at the core of anything and everything that we do and like indu said that you know it's impacting us more because we are in the business of content creation and communications man our uh, uh two questions that i'd like each one of you to address as we go along is um what is the whole role of storytelling in this entire conversation and how do we prepare the next generation for it the whole conversation of um, authenticity and ethical uh, conduct because um, yes we have a, a great tool at hand it can it can turn us into masters if we use and collaborate it beautifully but it can equally become a dampener if we completely get used to pulling out stuff from a tool like that so um, role of emotional intelligence storytelling and how do we conduct ourselves with the technology as as empowering as that yeah i think these are valid points and uh, the only uh, you know in my defense what i would say is that any 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 point in favor of human intelligence over a long period of time i would just add the word yet uh, you know so yet you know this is true but if you just just you know broaden your horizon maybe to 10 15 20 years what's coming uh, just 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 look just look back at social media just look back at the evolution of how we used search okay uh, exactly we were in the same scenario right clients and agencies were discussing how we are going to use it should we allow it if we allow it what does it do to authenticity what does it do to ethics uh, you know initially people were skeptical and not very open that okay i have you know i have googled it or i have searched it as we used to call it back then uh, and i have used some of those elements the same things we see it now but you know few years down the line all of this is going to change and the change as i'm saying is going to be very very rapid today today if we i mean a decade ago we used to say okay you learn marketing you should also learn digital marketing now mm. we don't say use those terms it's you know so that's my message to the, the 30 and the 30 that there there is no marketing or there is no communications without without the you know uh, implementation of artificial intelligence tools and artificial intelligence from a content perspective content is the low hanging fruit right because that's where the first attack has happened but if you just look at i was talking to uh, somebody uh, who manufactures robots uh, in silicon valley yeah, and that the founder made a very interesting point he said that uh, you know the the best day for a human uh, and he was talking in in the context of uh, deploying security staff at real estate complexes and commercial complexes and so on and he said that the best day for a human uh, is the first day that's time you are energized and you are motivated and you you know and over a period of time you can say the enthusiasm of an individual goes down and for for an artificial intelligence robot it's exactly the opposite the first day is is the worst day but the more that robot uh, that artificially intelligence backed robot spends in that environment it just keeps getting better and there is an inflection point when that artificial intelligence robot gets far better than any human in, uh, you know uh, human being can do in 24 hours in no you know absolutely no no point assuming that the you know power is there and all those things are there but fine but uh, there is absolutely no lag in any sort of service level agreement just if you just extrapolate this to other industries yeah you will see the power of how it is unfolding now we are looking at and talking in terms of the artificial intelligence and how its implications in in the content and communication space so the first disruption is happening here because of the chat gpt moment 
And, and the last point on that would be, we have to separate AI with AGI. So artificial intelligence, I mean, even the recommendations on YouTube and Netflix has been AI. So AI has been around us for several decades. It's, it's nothing new. Yeah. It's only when OpenAI released chat GPT, all bets were off. And then Google has to follow. And now we are in an arms race. Okay. It's really it's an arm race between the big tech companies as to who's going to win uh, this particular space. So in that, what is likely to happen is that uh, mistakes are going to be made. And these mistakes are going to be far will have a far severe impact on humanity. Uh, imagine things going wrong, God forbid, in healthcare, things going around, uh, wrong in uh, BFSI. So if we uh, just in, you know, expand our thing from, uh, you know, uh, from the marketing and comm space uh, or the content space that we see, we, I, I see a lot more things are likely to get worse before they get better. Uh, and, and that's what, it, it all depends on the kind of, and I think Shobha made the point of uh, you know, emotions. Uh, Again, our emotions are a product of our experiences of the past. And the same is applicable of when we train these large language models. The better you train them, the, I mean, whoever has used Alexa would know that Alexa depicts emotions. Now, whether you want to call it emotions or not, but uh, 30 under 30 maybe, you know, we'll call it emotion. It, 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 con it uh, converses with you. So there is no, I mean, uh, in that sense, if you see that the change is far more rapid and far more severe than we, you know, imagine uh, now. But I believe the content space is, is the lowest hanging fruit and is going to be first uh, disrupted or is already disrupted in my view. All right, great. Thank you so much. Some really solid points again there. And I really like the point on the first day versus upskilling and practicing and becoming a better version of yourself. Uh, because that's a point that's applicable while, uh, while you're right that first day human beings are most excited. But the fact remains that as we go on, we also upskill, we also learn, we also become a better provided, version of ourselves, sorry, provided we sorry, are invested in provided it. Provided we do that, provided we, the, the point on learning, but that's a given as far as, uh, you know, an AI model is concerned. Yeah, and the only the only you know quick point on that would be AI will be optimized to deliver a certain task, and then it will dis disregard anything else. So if it is optimized to deliver X, it will whatever comes in its way, it's going, just going to dismantle that and going to focus on X. And that's what the that's what the challenge is, right? That you know what happens when it does that. Interesting. So the point of laser sharp focus and upskilling and learning that the AI has um, as as a as a comparable comparable edge. Um, moving on to Sunita, your thoughts, uh, we started open this conversation from the point of view of storytelling, from the point of view of emotional learning and evolution over a period of time. And hence, what is the uh, point of view of the young ones who are coming into the industry or who are winning on their game right now, but the left playing field is changing for them with AI coming in? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think uh, this generation is probably very, very accelerated in their journey on embracing uh, technology or any kind of digital uh, evolutions that are happening. Uh, today, if I call my daughter, she never picks up. She says it's so cringy to answer your phone. Can you just text? So so that's that's how they have become so you know cut off from what we knew as our way of connecting digitally, right? So... So all that is happening. And um, yeah, this from a generation perspective, when I see these young ones who come to our, uh, you know, for training uh, as management trainees or whatever, they're way ahead of their thinking in terms of what that digital can do to them or wh wh how they can leverage that. Um, so, th and they are constantly discovering that and they're constantly spending, investing their time and energy in learning. I see my daughter, you know, she spends so much time in just discovering this, you know, whether it's chat GPT, they are ahead of the game. Um, what it actually takes away is what we learned in our oh, days and oh, which continues to uh, hold true is the, again, I will hold on to that is the emotional aspect. Uh, but having said that, I think this, as um, Munawar said, the skill spectrum is getting wider. And uh, today, earlier we used to say that learn and unlearn right but it is actually learn unlearn and relearn so for us the message uh, to even the youngsters is fine you learn unlearn and relearn relearn technology etc but again relearn what what it takes to be make an authentic story and um, so i was just uh, chatting with one professor and he was saying that how shelf life of skills is changing you know he used to teach ai uh, and he was saying every day by the time the kids graduate 
everything is changing. Everything has changed. So there is no point on having a course like AI to teach you what it could, you know, how it can change the world because the world has already changed by then, by the time they come. So what is what never used to happen in decades, those decades are happening in weeks now. So yeah. these seismic technological seismic sh shocks are actually getting so accelerated and pandemic taught us that. The pandemic showed that, you know, there is nothing called new normal. It's all, it's always normal. I mean, uh, sorry, it's never normal. You know, from mm -hmm. new normal, it's now become never normal. And there is an author, there's a book whose uh, title, uh, Never Normal, which, which is excellent in teaching us as to never take these things for granted. You have mm -hmm. to keep upscaling. You have to stay ahead of the game. Um, but having said that, I think storytelling will continue to have that emotional aspect in it, the authenticity. I mean, look at companies like Unilever. Why do they continue to get consumer insights? Why does a brand manager go to a consumer household and say, I want to get human intelligence? What is that human, human insight or intelligence? It's how that person is engaging with the Unilever product throughout the day. So they have everything, right? From 6 a.m. to the time he or she goes to sleep, they have each and every product which touches the life. So, so that is what is human intelligence. And we will never be able to, you know, we'll never be able to replace it. But as I said, we have to work in harmony and the new generation, I keep telling them that, look, do not ignore the softer part of it. Left brain and right brain have to work together. Great, great. Um, two points that I take away from what you've uh, spoken about, Sunita, here, the fact that we can't just prepare for best practices. We need to ready ourselves for the next practices and therefore keep learning throughout and and it might never be normal right it, it from from new normal to a new to a new and hence the, the definition of the normal keeps changing so either it's always normal or never normal you can you, you know you can always look at the glass as half full or half empty uh, this brings me to you shobha uh, your thoughts on everything that we've discussed again uh, something that's established is the need for upskilling throughout and yet, while you're upskilling, you can't let the, um, the emotional side of you erode completely. The storytelling will always be around emotions and hitting the nail on its head and connecting with people. Absolutely. So um, let me break this down from my point of view is, you know, the word storytelling has two parts. It's a story and how it's told. So yeah. in terms of the creative part of the story, uh, yes, Chad, uh, any AI tool, whether it's chat GPT or anything that's going to come in the future, uh, can help us creating messaging uh, if you give it the right clue, cues, you know. So uh, even it, to a certain point, I would say that it can even mimic uh, emotional intelligence based on the emotional cues that you build into us when it's, you're training that uh, AI uh, technology. But the word, I mean, the all of us together have, so many kinds of emotions in a day that there is no possible uh, artificial intelligence uh, you know technology that can ever mimic the range of human emotions so where the human intelligence part of it will come is to uh, be able to still use that story and tell it to each customer or each target audience in a way that it touches them so that is not possible uh, with just a artificial intelligence aspect of it Yes, you will need a human to tell that, okay, if I'm sitting across a room from you, like, you know, it's similar to what Sunita was saying earlier, we're still going to be communicating to people. Uh, and that's exactly what, you know, Indu was also mentioning about it. At, at, at the end of the day, your communication is going to reach a human. And you were sitting across a table, picking up on body language, picking up on what is it that is making them really come closer to your brand, to uh, them to be able to understand the kind of messaging that you're going to give to them. That still requires a human interface. Uh, your AI tools, anything will only help you to a certain extent. It can, of course, it can help you, you know, bring your messages more approachable. It can help you make, make it more sharper, you know, to Munawa's point. It can give you that razor sharp focus. It can help you not get distracted, uh, which is also a very, uh, you know, human trait that, you know, we tend to move around the subject. Sometimes, you know, we might not be able to know how to exactly get to a point. So it might help you gain efficiency. But for you to be able to reach to each customer customizably, uh, to be able to make your messages, uh, to be, uh, you know, dry, draw different inferences from it, uh, still I would think uh, needs us to collaborate very effectively the tools and help, let the tools help you uh, instead of trying to you, uh, it's not in competition with you. I think that's the first 
thing that we all need to accept and that you know even the you know 30 under 30 i mean anyone even under 10 or under 20 like uh, if anita was saying you know even younger ones are now playing with ai apps so all that we need to do is tell them is that you know they're not in competition with you you're not running against them you're running with them so let them help you they will help you run faster they will help you run better they will help you run smarter uh, but if you don't have to start fighting a battle with them because then that's not a winning battle at any case because you know mm. honestly this it's not even a battle that you will want to fight and win. Great. Very pertinent point there. Uh, it's all about collaboration and being complementary to each other. Any technology for that matter, any technology, we use it in the right way. We learn and we master it. Then we can always, you know, uh, derive advantage from it. Uh, coming to you, Indu, of course, you've heard uh, the three panelists talk about this entire piece. And of course, I'd like to hear your point of view on that. Along with that, if you can make a point or two, because you spoke about, you know, the whole complementary and collaboration thing very early on in the discussion in itself. Um, we've discussed that how content is the first one to get impacted, because ultimately, that's what AGI is really doing. Like when I was saying, AI has always been around us. We've never contested it in the way we are contesting it now. But right now, the reason why it's becoming even more pertinent for comms and media is because content, like we said, is low hanging, right? As a as an attack point or as a discussion point or as a tangible point that we are able to see very early on. So what are your thoughts on uh, that? If you could, you know, share a point of view there. Sure. So first I'll build on to what was getting discussed in the previous pointer. I would say that let us be very clear that there will be not one solution for everyone. Hmm. You know, If I'm working in a B2B company, talking to the CEOs, the consumption of media for them is very different from me talking to somebody who's sitting in a village, you know, so we as communicators, we need to understand that we will have to now have a clear understanding of both ends of the spectrum because there will be a clear stark difference and it will not impact us the way it has impacted Western worlds because there still, you know, the kind of people that you see in villages to what you see in urban is not very different. We are still a mm -hmm. country wherein you know the penetration of internet is not 100%. AI is not 100%. So we will now be required to have these two understanding of what we usually call India and Bharat, right? Because most of the brands today from the urban, because urban is exhausted, are taking the route of regional communications and going to the hinterlands. How much of impact you can create with AI there, I'm not very sure if it is exactly the same what you can do in metro towns. Because of the, there are so many media dark areas. You know, Shobha just spoke about why does a brand today also go and talk, whatever. I mean, I've been part of Reckitt and wherein you go to very smallest of the towns for places for Dettol and you try to understand people who, who, are, who are daily wage earners. For them also, it's important to reach out to them. But can mm. you reach out to them through AI, through the same tools that you would, re that you would reach out, say an Accenture or a Capgemini? No, so these are two different worlds. So we, we now should be, Fixing our understanding of both sides, that's very important. And especially for the people who are now entering, they should know that these two do, worlds do exist because they might have their own understanding of this urban. I wouldn't really fear about the skilling part of this generation because we usually divide the whole, whole digital conversation into three or four five parts, right? They're digital natives, they're digital adopters, they're digital laggards. If it is about looking at the age groups and demographics, honestly, we are the laggards. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who already yeah. know it. So learning is not a challenge. I would bring in the challenge of regulation and guidelines. Because as a brand, I will be more worried that yes, I have to be there because if somebody is researching about me through a chat GPT, I have to be present. But I have to ensure that I'm present with the right kind of messaging. So that regulation, that monitoring, that listening, that online reputation management is going to take a very fierce you know, mechanism. And that's more important. And once we are able to set tone for that, that is what we need to teach or probably give to this newer generation of communicators who are 30 under 30 or 20 early, whatever. But I would say that those are the aspects that we should be bothered about. Because what Munawar in the beginning spoke about is that it's going to hit us. You know, it's just going to increase. The interventions will increase. It's about us being better prepared 
because like i mentioned it is going to have a transversal impact on everything that we do in communications so collaborations will happen whether it is content whether it's research all of that is going to be there very much i'm not really sure if i've answered all your questions but i i strongly believe it is about us learning to ace the coexisting part thank you so much and though you've not just answered the questions but you've opened up a new direction in this uh, conversation that brings me almost to the last section of what we are discussing which is the ethics authenticity and you know training ourselves to to be a step ahead while we all agree that we need to work in tandem with the progress in technology and like you're saying yes maybe the social natives might be a little ahead of us we might still be early adopters or in some cases laggards or whatever let's let's you know we'll not go there but the fact remains that you know uh to stay a step ahead there is need for regulation we can't wait for the world outside to regulate maybe there is some bit of self regulation some bit of self um, you know um, initiative that we may need to take my uh, request to all of you is like a minute or two of closing comments where you talk about the need for validation the need for fact check the need for self regulation and how do you see that coming into the picture for from a comms perspective uh be it the uh, prc ai is the world doing it for us be it the self regulation that we may want to do for our own organizations be it in the whole uh, hiring and upskilling space what is it that's required to bring in more validation and authenticity while we are interacting with different mediums and different tools of communication we are at 231 we have to close this at uh, 240 so that gives good 2 minutes to each one of you and then we can take the last 30 seconds 60 or seconds to close it yes munawar please come in okay so i think you know as as we say that you know ai will not replace us people who master ai will replace people who don't master ai okay mm-hmm. so let's put it this way so that's the first part on skilling and learning there is no other option we have to skill and upskill and and, and this entire process is uh, is quite exhausting exhausting because you know every few years you have to rediscover and reinvent yourself and this pace is only going to accelerate so there is no running away from you know not uh, updating and reskilling yourself so because we are because specifically in our context we are in a in portion uh, information uh, economy so it becomes far more relevant uh, and closer to us so that's 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 the first point uh on the on the transparency and authenticity i think this is this is going to be the biggest impediment for adoption of ai and regulation because how ai functions uh, ai is basically based on large language models which is trained on variety of sources of data yeah that sources of data could be millions of books uh hundreds of thousands of uh, reddit channels and so on okay now in that context when new information is generated through artificial intelligence intelligence artificial general intelligence the problem is that who owns that information who owns that data if anybody has used a tool like mid journey you just type into a tool like mid journey that i want uh, a picture of uh, you know a sun uh, of a sunrise with you know two people sitting and having an ice cream it will generate a fabulous image for you now the question is uh, and the debate has not settled yet or, or, or it's just started uh very recently we had one of the top uh, uh you know publication in the us which is looking to file a suit against uh, chat gpt because they believe that some of the information in that uh in, in their data set is is from uh, their i mean uh, their material so as an agency when i generate some content and i pass it off to my client who owns who takes the risk of you know whether it whether it ticks all the boxes of copyright authenticity privacy and what kind of transparency do i do today i don't when i you know put out an article let's say of 800 words i don't say that okay i have google search this and i don't put that as a disclaimer but do we have to put a disclaimer when you are using chat gpt as of now it looks like we have to so these are some of the questions and finally on your regulation bit i think self regulation is where it has to start we as corporates and agencies have to decide first of all because you know uh, from a government standpoint they will always be behind that's how bureaucracy and government works our technology doesn't wait for all of this and technology doesn't care uh, you know care about anybody's emotions right it just it just moves uh, fast ahead and you, we've seen that in the web3 and crypto space when the regulation comes it generally it's a dampener for the for the space 
right? So when we have to be prepared for that. So self-regulation is important within organization, within agencies as to how we're going to work. Our NDAs need to change, our contracts need to change as to, for example, when I'm working with an account, uh, with, with, a, with a client and when I pass it on to some other, some other agency, uh, I pass on the assets. So who owns those assets? What's the legal implication for me and so on? I think these are, these are some of the open questions. There are some, there is some thinking, but there is no clear cut. Uh, of course, jurisdictions will, will you know, differ uh, in these kind of things. So these, these are the challenges which, and th there is a lot for reputation consultants to do that, do that because wherever there is uncertainty, where, where there is, uh, you know, policy, uh, lack of clarity uh, is, is something where we can uh, come in. Sure. Thank you so much, Manava. Some really solid points there. Uh, in interest of time, I'll quickly move to Sunita. Yeah, I will. In the interest of time, again, I will say check to Manava on <laughs> all the points. I agree. I agree on a lot of these things. And um, having said that, I'll just say that, you know, uh, we do need to create a sense of urgency, but without really creating an anxiety. And sometimes we underestimate and we get disappointed in the short term, and then we underestimate the impact it could have on long term. So having said that, yes, self-regulation is important. Skilling is important because as um, you know, you would have heard that if you don't take change by its hand, it will take you by your throat. So, yeah. so absolutely, I agree with whatever Munawar has said. Okay. Great. Shobha, some of your closing remarks. Yeah, so uh, I will just say plus one to everything that's been said again. Uh, yes, it is definitely something that self-regulation is the key. Uh, like all te technology tools, it is a work in progress. I don't imagine it to be resolved or come to a final state at any time soon. It will continue to move, evolve, change learn, unlearn, relearn. So the technology is going to do exactly what we are going to do. And the amount of help that we get from it depends on the command of data that we're giving it. So if we start using data to uh, fabricate uh, or fabricated data to get some stimulations for us to understand if it works for us or not, then it stays with it. So next time somebody is going to use the same search thing, it might just end up giving your test data as a fact data. And that is usually how, you know, in a, in a comms world, we all understand this is how fake news starts getting generated because we would stimulate a conversation to understand the viability of that tool. And that becomes because the internet or technology by itself doesn't have the intelligence to differentiate between what is a fact and what is not a fact. You will end up, you know, feeding it a lot of untrue items and then that's how the, you know, the entire thing erosion will begin. So it is, again, our responsibility to not just, you know, fact check what we are getting, but also be responsible enough in terms of what is the content you're feeding the tool. Because if you yeah. feed in rubbish, then you're going to get in rubbish. So, you know, it's our responsibility also to make sure that the content being provided to the tool to learn is actually as good as, you know, what you were expecting it to come out. Uh, yeah, another good point that Manawa was making was around plagiarism. Uh, again, something in uh, in comms, everybody fights with it, everybody faces it, everybody tries to avoid it. So maybe, you know, we need to also make sure that the things that we're using it, because we all agree that content is the easiest uh, for a AI to do and it's also the easiest for AI to replicate because it will give you an article based on your search strings but it may be somebody else's work so I yeah. how do you you know, ensure that it's not plagiarized. It is keeping the copyright laws and the copyright uh, in place. That's also something I think uh, as we go along, these are, uh, you know, like Omanawa said, open questions, uh, hoping that, you know, while content is going to be easy for us to replicate, but we obviously don't want somebody else's work to pass off as ours. So uh, I guess Thank responsibility, you. yeah, use technology Taking responsibly. The Great, Shobha. Really important point there, being mindful of your own conduct when you are interacting with technology and building guardrails around it as regulators or, you know, as self-regulation. Great points. Indu, over to you for your closing comments. We've got exact 60 seconds to close this panel now. Wow, thank you so much. I guess some brilliant word has already come out, but I strongly believe that in this war of share of voice, brands will make mistakes and they will mm. choose impact over authenticity in many cases, which will yeah. create problems and which is where, you know, some of these guidelines, regulations and communicators being the conscience keepers will play a very important role. So we have to be a lot more dynamic because our scope of work will change 
gradually with each passing interventions of ai you know coming into our lives so that's something very very critical hence my one word to everybody would be make it as a part of your strategy handling managing ai and ai led tools should today be a part of your overarching strategy so that nothing hits you off guard and you are better prepared whether it's you your individual your spoke people your you know social media everything comes in together but we have to be like we say crisis preparedness so it has to be you know ai preparedness <laughs> is something that we have to work towards great amazing points thank you so much uh, to all the panelists for such an interactive and such a vibrant conversation uh, we saw some really interesting points being made here and you are such great articulators that i don't think i need to spend any more time wrapping this all up you've done a wonderful job yourself so aditya i'll bring you in here i think we are right on time so should we just conclude this so the next set of panelists who are waiting in the lobby can take charge thank you thank you so much to all our panelists for of course for attending this and thank you so much garima for making sure that it ends on time as well i know so much we could have spoken about yes. but thank you at least we've got a kick start and of course we try to dig deep as much as we could and i'm sure there's there's a lot for audience members who take away watching us online so thank you so much to everybody thank you thank you thank, thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody nice talking to you all bye bye